Hey, Carolina, how are you? Hi, fine, and you? I'm doing wonderful, thank you. So, um, my first question is, um, why did you choose a 12-year-old girl as the main character in Ghostbusters? You know, Phoebe Spengler is the same age as my daughter, and she's the same age as the daughter of Gil Kennan, my co-writer. We wanted to make a hero for them. We wanted to make a young, brilliant, scientific girl who is misunderstood by the world, but like every other Ghostbuster before her, she is an outsider with a big brain who becomes a hero when she puts on the flight suit and she puts on the proton pack. So um, it took you years to carry on with your father's legacy. And also in the movie, we see Kali, who is struggling with her father's legacy. Um, <laughs> is this character a reflection of your own journey? Well, that's a personal question. Uh, uh, I think it's not an accident that I am the son of a Ghostbuster and this is a movie about the grandchildren of Ghostbusters and this is certainly about the confidence it takes to pick up the proton pack. But unlike Callie, my father was very present in my life. Uh, you know, I have an amazing relationship with my father. We've had a, a conversation about movies that goes back as far as I can remember. We have this wonderful language, uh, which is cinema, that has allowed us to talk about, frankly, everything in life. And we made this movie with him sitting right next to me. Uh, now that's intimidating, you know, if your parents came with you to work every day and weighed in on your choices, you know, that could get scary at moments, but I had my storytelling hero sitting next to me, you know, and the world's foremost Ghostbusters expert, and when I would look over at him and he was smiling, I knew I was making the right movie. And while you two were shooting, is there any advice or any direction that your father gave you? I mean, my father gives me advice all the time, and it's kind of hard to nail it down to one thing. But my father is always talking about the director's job of preserving honesty. That it is not your job to be funny. You know, your barometer for comedy will never be as good as your barometer for truth. So you should ask yourself as a director, as you watch a scene, do you believe what's happening on screen? Um, but he also, uh, he's also very pro-slime and he was disappointed that I did not put more slime in the movie. Um, I also want to know your opinion about 2016 Ghostbusters movie and also did the movie influence Afterlife in any way? You know, I, I thought the 2016 film was hilarious. I think those four women are obviously four of the most brilliant actresses working and what Paul Feig did with that was he expanded the idea of what a Ghostbusters movie could be. And that was really important. Uh, I don't think that our movie would be possible without that. You know, we're continuing to try to broaden the concept of a Ghostbusters movie by taking it out of New York City and casting these new characters and putting them on a new adventure. Uh, but I really credit Paul Feig for being the first person to open up the world of what a Ghostbusters film could be. Um, I think that remakes and sequels are a good opportunity to bring more diversity to popular franchises. Mm. Um, is this something that you wanted to achieve with Afterlife? Yeah, I mean, look, I, I think that it was really important to both Gil and I that the main character of this film be a young woman. I think it was really important to us that if we're going to add two more Ghostbusters, that uh, one be uh, one be African American and one be Asian. Uh, and I'm I'm proud of the diversity in this film and that it reflects the the world we live in. And um, what I'm more excited about is the future of Ghostbusters, because there should be Ghostbusters films from around the world. Every culture has their relationship with the supernatural and the unknown, and I would love to see Ghostbusters movies from directors from around the world. Um, you were talking about the future of Ghostbusters. Do you plan on doing more movies or maybe finding someone to replace you? Is there any plan? I want to see. I mean, first, we got to see if people like this movie. Uh, you know, I, I love how confident you are, but first, we got to see if people like this movie, if they embrace it. They seem to be enjoying it. If they do, then I hope Sony greenlights many more of these films. I have more stories to tell. We'll see what happens. So to conclude, what do you think is the most powerful message in Ghostbusters Afterlife? You know, Ghostbusters Afterlife is pro-science at a time when I think that's really important. And, and is about forgiveness. You know, this is a movie about three generations of a family and, and how hard it is to forgive somebody when they're no longer there. And if there is one message right at the core of it is 
uh, how we forgive those who we've lost. And my last question is about the future of uh, cinema. The pandemic has had a severe impact on movie theaters. Um, do you think that stream platforms will end with the cinema experience or movie theaters will recover? I mean, look, I love streaming as much as the next person. It really helped all of us get through this pandemic. But if there's one thing I've missed over the last couple of years, it's going to the movies. I love going to the movies. I've missed buying a ticket and getting popcorn and seeing the trailers and watching something on the big screen with friends and with family, with strangers, you know. Uh, that's the kind of movie we wanted to make with Ghostbusters Afterlife. We wanted something that brought people back to the movie, something you could take your whole family to, uh, something that was entertaining, and that was like a, a full-on popcorn movie. Uh, and it's been a genuine thrill to tour around and see this movie with audiences around the world in my favorite place on earth, which is a movie theater.